Hey, today I'm going to read to you a story about the American flag in honor of Memorial Day being yesterday. I thought we would do something a little bit patriotic. So this is called Stars and Stripes, the story of the American flag. It is written by Sarah L. Thompson, and it is published by HarperCollins Publishers. It has beautiful illustrations. The flag of the United States of America has 50 stars and 13 stripes. People call it the stars and stripes. You can see the flag at schools and at post offices, in town squares and at baseball games. You can see flags and parades on the 4th of July. Every day the stars and stripes flies in each of the 50 states. It flies all over the world. It has even flown on the moon. About 250 years ago, America did not have a flag. America was not even a country. It was a group of colonies ruled by England. Not all Americans wanted to be ruled by England. Some were angry about the taxes England made them pay on things like paper, paint, and tea. A group of men called the Sons of Liberty sometimes flew a flag to show that they were angry. The flag had 13 red and white stripes, one for each of the 13 American colonies. In 1775, the Revolutionary War began. The American col colonies fought to win their freedom from England. Early in the war, the Americans used many different flags. George Washington commanded the American soldiers. On the first day of 1776, he raised a new flag near his army's camp. The flag had the 13 red and white stripes that stood for the 13 colonies. In the corner, there was a in the corner, there was a flag Americans knew well, the flag of England, the Union Jack. You can see it right there. Not all Americans wanted their new flag to show the Union Jack. Some flew flags with a rattlesnake. The snake came to stand for America. People believed that a rattlesnake would not harm others unless it was threatened, but if it was attacked, it was deadly. Many flags with the rattlesnake warned don't tread on me. So don't step on me or else watch out, right? The Continental Congress was created to govern the American colonies. Two years after the Revolutionary War began, Congress finally decided that America needed a single flag. So one flag that everybody had to be united, the same together, right? The flag would have 13 stripes, one for each colony and it would have 13 stars on a blue background to show that America was a new constellation, something never seen before. No one was sure just how the flag should look. Some flags had red, white, and blue stripes. The stars might have had five, six, seven, or eight points. People didn't always have time or even enough cloth to make a, a flag carefully. Some flags were stitched together out of rags and scraps. The Revolutionary War went on for six long years. In the end, the Americans won. The 13 colonies became the United States of America. Soon, two new states, Vermont and Kentucky, joined the United States. Two new stripes and two new stars were added to the flag. Not long afterward, the United States was again at war with England. This was the War of 1812. On a September night in 1814, an American lawyer named Francis Scott Key watched English ships attack Fort Hen McHenry in Baltimore Harbor, Maryland. All night long, the cannons crashed. In the morning, Francis looked up to see if the flag with 15 stars and stripes was still flying. It was. Then he knew the Americans had won the battle. Francis wrote a poem called The Star-Spangled Banner. Later, it became the national anthem of the United States. More states joined the United States. Sometimes people added a new stripe, a new star to the flag each time. Sometimes they didn't. In 1818, Congress made a decision. There would only be 13 stripes in the flag, but there would be a star for every state. Sometimes the stars were in rows, sometimes in circles, and sometimes even in one big star. Almost a hundred years later, President William Howard Taft decided that the stars should always be in rows. 
this is how the flag looks today. There are 13 stripes, seven red and six white to remind us of the first 13 colonies. There are 50 stars to tell us that each state in our country is important. The American flag didn't change even during the Civil War. In 1861, this terrible war split the United States into two parts. 11 southern states tried to form their own country, the Con Confederate States of America. Some people in the North wanted to take the stars for the southern states out of the flag, but President Abraham Lincoln refused. He said that the United States was still one country. After four years of fighting, at last the North won. The country was united again. The stars and stripes had flown when the United States was at war in lands far away. It was flown on tanks and on battleships. People put flags in cemeteries to remember soldiers who have died. The stars and stripes flies in peacetime too. On special days like Memorial Day and the 4th of July, people hang flags outside of their homes. Sometimes people even wear shirts or jackets or scarves decorated with flags. The stars and stripes hangs behind American athletes who win medals in the Olympic Games. On September 11, 2001, the United States was attacked. The World Trade Center in, the, in New York City was destroyed. A plane hit the Pentagon in Washington, D.C. Another plane crashed in Pennsylvania. More than 3,000 people were killed. After September 11th, Americans flew more flags than ever. They hung flags on homes, in stores, and office buildings. People wore clothing and jewelry decorated with flags. They flew flags from cars and trucks. These flags said that even though people were angry and afraid and very sad, they still had hope and faith in their country. No matter what happened, they believed the stars and stripes would always keep flying. I hope you enjoyed that story. I'm sure there's a lot of information in here. It jumps around very quickly, so you might have some more questions. Um, it's just an overview, and we're really focusing on just the flag. Thanks so much for reading with me today.